Today morning, Srimad Bhagavatam class will be given by His Holiness Bhakti Vigna Vinashan Swami Maharaj. Somati Nandana Prajabara Nakara Gokula Ranjana Kana Yasomati Nandana Prajabara Nakara Kukularanjana kana Gopi parana dhanna ma dhanna manohara Gopi Parana Dhanna Madhanna Manohara Kalamana Vidhana Kalamana Vidhana Mami Avila Amala Harina Mami Avila Vipina Purandara Navina Nagarabara Vipina Puranjara Navina Nagarabara Bamsi Badana Suvasa Bamsi Badana Suvasa Raja Jana Palana Sura Kulana Shana Raja Jana Palana Sura Kulana Shana Nanda Godana Rakoala Nanda Godana Rakoahala Govinda Madhava Navanitataskara Govinda Madhava Navanitataskara Sundarananda Gopala Sundarananda 
Sundarananda Gopala Yamuna Tata Chara Gopi Vasanahara Yamuna Tata Chara Gopi Vasanahara Rasa Rasika Kripa Mahaya Rasa Rasika Kripa Mahaya Shri Radha Balava Vrindamana Shri Radha Balava Vrindamana Natabara Bhakati Vinoda Shrahaya Vinoda Shrahaya Amala Harina Mami Abilasa Amala Harina Mami Abilasa Govinda Madhava Navani Tataskara Govinda Madhava Navanita Kaskara Sri Radha Balava Vrindavana Natabara Sri Radha Balava Vrindavana Natabara Vakati Vinoda Shrahaya Vakati Vinoda Shrahaya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo, Ramo Ramo, Hare Hare. Nittai Gaur Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo, Hari Bo.
जय जय प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद प्रभु पाद जय जय प्रभु पाद गोड प्रेम नंदे हरि हरि बो नमः ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पिस्ताय बुद्धाय श्रीमती भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीति नम नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचरिणी ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवाय ओम नमो भागवते वसुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नारम चरोतम दैवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर नस्त प्रयेशु वभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सगवती उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर्भवती नैस्तकी श्रीमद भागवता कैंट वन चैप्टर नंबर सेवन एंटो द सन ऑफ ड्रोन अ पनिश टुडे टेक्स्ट नंबर थर्टी सेवन स्वप्राण या परा प्राणाय तदस्थ श्रेय यदोषाप्रणम या परा प्राणायुष्णति अग्रिना खला श्रेय स्वाणम या परा प्राणायुष्णति
marriages. One's own life. Yati. Ya. One who. Para prashnai. At the cost of others' lives. Prapushnati. Maintains properly. Adrina. Shameless. Kala, Kala, wretched, Tadvada, killing of him, Tashya, his, he, certainly, Shreya, well-being, yet, by which, Doshat, by the fault, Yati, goes, Adha, downwards, Puman, a person. Translation, a, a cruel and wretched person who maintains his existence at the cost of others' lives deserves to be killed for his own well-being. Otherwise, he will go down by his own actions. You can all repeat. A cruel and wretched person who maintains his existence at the cost of others' lives deserves to be killed for his own well-being. Otherwise, he will go down by his own actions, purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. A life for a life is just punishment for a person who cruelly and shamelessly lives at the cost of another's life. Political morality is to punish a person by a death sentence in order to save a cruel person from going to hell. That a murderer is condemned to a death sentence by the state is good for the culprit because in his next life he will not have to suffer for his act of murder. Such a death sentence for the murderer is the lowest possible punishment offered to him. And it is said in the Smriti Shastra that men who are punished by the king on the principle of a life for a life are purified of all their sins, so much so that they may be eligible for being promoted to the planets of heaven. According to Manu, the great author of, of the, the great author of civic codes and religious principles, even the killer of animals is to be considered a murderer because animal food is never meant for the civilized man whose prime duty is to prepare himself for going back to Godhead. He says that in the act of killing an animal, there is a regular conspiracy by the party of sinners, and all of them are liable to be punished as murderers, exactly like a party of conspirators who kill a human being combinedly. He who gives permission, he who kills the animal, 
He who sells the slaughtered animal. He who cooks the animal. He who administers distribution of the foodstuff. And at last, he who eats such cooked animal food are all murderers. And all of them are liable to be punished by the laws of nature. No one can create a living being despite all advancement of material science. And therefore, no one has the right to kill a living being by one's independent whims for the animal eaters. The scriptures have sanctioned restricted animal sacrifices only. And such sanctions are there just to restrict the opening of slaughterhouses and not to encourage animal killing. The procedure under which animal sacrifice is allowed in the scriptures is good both for the animal sacrificed and the animal eaters. It is good for the animal in the sense that the sacrificed animal is at once promoted to the human form of life after being sacrificed at the altar. And the animal eaters, it, the animal eater is saved from grosser types of sins, eating meats supplied by organized slaughterhouses, which are ghastly plates, places for breeding all kinds of material afflictions to society, country, and the people in general. The material world is itself a place always full of anxieties. And by encouraging animal slaughter, the whole atmosphere becomes polluted more and more by war, pestilence, famine, and many other unwanted calamities. Omagyana Tamaranda Syakyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Vanchakaupa Tarubyas Cha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnavi Bhyo Namo Nama Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Lord Krishna is instructing Arjuna in what is the appropriate punishment for Ashwatthama because Ashwatthama had released the Brahmastra weapon and attempted to uh, kill the child in the womb of Uttara, who was, of course, Maharaj Pariksit. So, and he had also killed the sleeping sons of Draupadi. So Ashwatthama had performed many atrocities, and he was to be punished, even though he is the son of a Brahmana. He is the son of Dronacharya, so the son of a Brahmana. Because he's the son of a Brahmana, he's given the respect of a Brahmana, but he's shown himself to be an unqualified Brahmana. He's a Brahmana, Brahmana Bandhu, a fallen Brahmana. So Lord Krishna is describing that when people act in such a manner, then they have to be punished. They're killers. Killers have to be punished. And Srila Prabhupada quotes Manu Samhita. Manu Samhita says murderers should be hanged. If they're not given capital punishment, then it's actually negligence on the part of the state. And Prabhupada is quoting the principle, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. He said this is proper. 
This is actually proper way to punish people. You kill somebody, you have to be killed. One time on the farm in Hyderabad, over at, uh, what is it called? Mit, mit, Mitchin? Yeah. So there was some problem with uh, rats eating the boga. So one devotee said to Prabhupada, we should put some poison down Prabhupada and kill them. And Prabhupada said, you should be killed. <laughs> so Prabhupada didn't approve <laughs> that we could, should kill the rats. <laughs> but uh, here, Prabhupada is speaking about an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, that this is proper. People should be punished according to the depth, the, seer, the gravity of the crime which they have committed. People want to eat meat, however, what should be done? Well, Prabhupada explains there is the process of animal sacrifice. You want to eat meat, there's a procedure. It's prescribed in the Vedas. You, you want to eat meat, then there's, there's allowance. But not any animal. You can only eat animals like a goat. Never can you kill the cow. The cow is one of the mothers. Mothers are always to be protected. And so cows are never to be killed. Goats, however, in the Vedas, it's described that the goat can be taken before the goddess Kali. But not every day. Only on the dark moon night. On the dark moon night, meaning once in a month. Once in a month, you can take the goat before the goddess Kali. And you can slaughter it as an offering. But at the time of killing the goat, you have to tell the goat, I am killing you. In the future, you can kill me. Hmm? Right? You, because I'm desiring to eat meat, so I'm killing the goat. I'm going to kill the, kill the goat. But in the future, the goat can come back and to, it can kill me. So, any sane person will think, why I should go through this? Why I should risk this? Just like in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, you have Narada Muni preaching to Prachini Barishat. Prachini Barishat was performing a lot of sacrifices. He'd been killing a lot of animals. But Narada Muni came to him and told him, he said, those animals are all waiting for you. I said, you've been killing all the animals. The next, in the future, you're going to have to be killed by all of these animals. So, we have to understand the situation. You want people want to eat meat? Yeah, okay, do it at your own risk. You have to understand the gravity, what's going to happen. Of course, we have the situation, it's quite common today, you know, because of our congregational preaching, you get a lot of people coming for initiation and you ask them, are you vegetarian? They say, yeah, I'm a vegetarian. But do people in your house eat meat? Well, yeah, other people eat meat. You know, sometimes the lady is married and the husband's not a vegetarian. And so then you ask the lady, do you cook meat for your husband? And if they cook meat for their husband, then that's a problem. As described here. They're also killers. They're also guilty. Just like if people conspire to kill a person. If there's a gang of people who arrange to kill people. There were some terrorists one time, they went to attack parliament. And there was one man, he was helping, he helped them. He arranged for them to go to the parliament to attack parliament and to try to kill people there. So he also got hanged. He also got capital punishment because he was aiding and abetting the murderers. He didn't do the act of murder himself, but he was guilty of 
at helping other people to do the act. So he's also a murderer, and he also hanged. So similarly, killing animals, it's a serious problem, particularly if you kill the cow. That is the most serious. Why? Because the cow is special among other forms of life. The cow is, we said, first of all, it's the mother, that she provides valuable milk, which is important for the human being to develop health and a good brain. And the soul in the cow is going to become human being in the next life. And when you kill the cow, it's almost like killing a human being. And in some parts of the world, like in the past, in Nepal, it was considered a very serious crime to kill a cow, and you would be put to jail. Even in countries like China, they had the custom during the time of Mao Zedong, uh, that during that time, meaning like you know, 70, 80 years ago. So during that time, the people had so much respect and so much, they valued so much the cow and the ox that if somebody killed it, they would be fined, they would be punished. It's serious. So people want to eat meat, then there's an animal which you can eat. You know, you can eat animals like goats. Of course, some parts of the world, they eat other things. They eat even dogs, and they will eat snakes. They'll eat many different, that's their business, you know. This is, you know, hellish civilization. But because people have these uncontrolled senses, they're so they're so lusty, they want to taste these different things. Prabhupada explains why people eat meat. He said, they like the taste of blood. They're eating meat because they like the taste of blood. So you want to taste blood? Then drink milk. Milk is the natural way to taste blood. Milk is the transformation of the blood of the cow. When the cow gives milk, it's, tra it's the transformation of the blood of the cow. And the cows give the milk, and it's meant for human consumption. Nowadays, there's a fashionable movement called veganism. Vegan, you've heard of that? Vegan, right? They don't want, they won't take any animal products. You know? They won't take any dairy products. In some ways, it's justified because it's true that the cows are not properly taken care of. The cows are abused. Even the people who have a dairy farm, when the cow is no longer giving milk, then they'll simply slaughter the cow. And that's very barbaric. But this is what goes on. The, the dairy industry has is, is really become an industry. It's not done in the proper mode of caring. Just like in the Vedic culture, the cows were cared for. Vaishya is meant to protect the cow. One who is a Vaishya, Nanda Maharaj, had a herd of nine lakh cows. That's quite a good herd. And, and you can read at the time of the birth of Krishna, they gave huge numbers of cows in charity. So the cow, but the cow was valued and protected. But today, people think of cows, they think of cow like a machine. You give it some food and they'll give you milk. And they, they have machinery to drain every last drop of milk out of the cow in the most barbaric manners. The cows are not given the love and the care which they deserve. They are treated in a very, very nasty way just simply have machines to drain out the milk of the cow. 
And whenever there's no more milk, kill it. Now this is what's going on in Kali Yuga. So in some ways the vegan movement is, is justified. And there are a number of devotees in our movement. They won't drink milk unless it comes from a, 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 from a, an, a protected herd of cows. You should get ahimsa milk. Just like in London at our Bhaktivedanta Manor, they have a herd of cows. Now the cows in our Bhaktivedanta Manor, they are protected. They give milk, and when they stop giving milk, we keep them, and we care for them. We value them. Just like your mother, when the mother stops giving children, you don't kill her. You know, you take care of your mother. And so in the same way, we take care of mother cow. So Bhaktivedanta Manor, they produce milk. It's ahimsa milk, distinct from the, the milk which they sell in the supermarkets, which is often homogenized and uh, all di been through all different kinds of processes in order to give it a long life. That kind of milk does not have much value in it, really. It's milk only in name, but it doesn't have the real value of milk. You want to get milk, you have to get milk from cows which are properly cared for. And if you taste the milk which they have there at our temple in London at the Bhaktivinanta Manor, you can immediately understand it's so wonderful. It's so, so very nice, so very rich, and, and so healthy. So we want to educate people. One of the things which we educate, of course, we educate them on many things. You know, you're not the body, you're spirit, soul. But we want to also educate them in the value of milk. People think milk, oh no, it's a horrible taste, I don't like milk, you know, give me Coca-Cola, right? You know, they're thinking drink Coca-Cola rather than drink milk. They don't know what is actually good for them. They have no proper understanding. So we're trying to help people to understand the value of the cow and the importance of milk how it is so valuable. As Prabhupada explains, every one of us has drank milk. When, when we're young babies, the only food we can drink is milk. And we get that milk from our mother. And as we grow a little bit, we still need milk, and we get that milk from the cow. Of course, people, some people, the vegans say, oh, the cow's giving milk, it's meant for the calf. But as the calf grows, it's not good for the calf to keep drinking the milk of the mother. It's not productive to the calf. It's not healthy for the calf to keep drinking the, the cow's, the mother's milk. The calf has to learn to eat grass and eat the, the grains and so on. Not that it continues to drink. But the cow is still giving milk, and that milk is meant for human consumption. And there are even cows which will give milk without having calves. There are some very special cows. They will provide milk even without the calf. So we do give great importance to the cow, and uh, not that the cow is God, but it's a very important living entity because of the service which they do. They simply take some grass and they give the most valuable food in the form of milk. Now, if you just want to taste blood, then go ahead, eat the goat then. Go ahead, you know. But remember, only once in the month, not every day. Of course, that was the, the problem uh, be, be in the time of uh, Lord Buddha the brahmanas had become corrupted and degraded and they were encouraging animal sacrifice. The brahmanas were encouraging people in the name of the Vedas 
to do animal sacrifices. Why? Brahmana, they get more money, right? They want to make more money, more business, more customers, more people coming for yagya. Okay, the brahmanas are becoming great. And what are they getting the people to do? Animal sacrifices. And that was why Lord Buddha came. Lord Buddha came to stop the people from killing all these animals and to lead the people away from the Vedas. Because the brahmanas were saying, in the name of the Vedas we do the yagya. It's in the Vedas. Yes, it's in the Vedas, but the problem is, in the Kali Yuga there are no brahmanas. There are no qualified brahmanas. The mantras are not chanted correctly. Previously, the brahmanas were qualified, they could chant the mantras properly. And by proper recitation of the mantras, when the animal was sacrificed, that animal would get a human body. It would be given the human body in the next life. So that's, prop that's proper use of the, Veda, the Vedic mantra. Prabhupada is explaining here that the animal sacrifice was good for the animal because the animal would get the human body. But the mantras had to be chanted correctly. Kali Yuga, no qualified brahmanas. The mantras are not effective. But still the people were performing the yagya, doing the yagyas. Why? To make the money, the business. So this corruption and degradation, this caused the advent of Lord Buddha. He led the people away from the Vedas. You don't need the brahmanas anymore. Just simply follow me. Hmm? We don't, we don't need to be killing all these animals. And of course, Lord Buddha, he gave great importance to ahimsa, non-violence. But non-violence is not the ultimate principle of religion. Krishna comes to establish religious principles. The ultimate principle of religion is not ahimsa. It is not simply non-violence. What is the, the ultimate principle of religion? That is taught by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Prem punarto mahan. The goal of life is to develop love for God. Not just simply ahimsa. That is simply a moral principle. It's good, but it's not the ultimate principle of religion. We have to understand properly how to and apply the principles of religion. So we give special importance to taking care of the cow. And we value very much cow's milk. Prabhupada would tell, he told us, just by drinking cow's milk, you can get pious activity. If you don't drink cow's milk, <laughs> I don't know. Where do we get the punya? Well, of course, we do a lot of other things to get pious activities. But just simply by drinking milk, it, you can get pious activities. But you want to get the milk from the protected cow, not from a cow which is going to be butchered and slaughtered. That is, and Prabhupada explains that what is the result of all of this? When we mistreat the cow, then the reactions come on the planet. This planet is actually the property of mother cow. This planet, the presiding deity of the earth planet, is mother Bhumi. Bhumi is the deity of the earth planet, and Bhumi is in the form of a cow, showing us that this planet actually belongs to the cow. We are meant to take care of the cows, and in return, the cow provides the most valuable food for us. Not only milk, of course. Everything from the cow is valuable. The urine of the cow is valuable, a very, very good medicine for the liver. The gober is a fuel in the villages even today. People use the gober for a fuel. And 
then you get also when the cow dies naturally, you can take the hide from the cow and you can use it to do things like make the straps on the medanga drum. So everything from the cow is sacred. We respect the cow and we take care. That's Lord Krishna. It, it's, he comes to show us how to take care of the cows. He comes as a cowherd boy. He, the, the cows and the brahmanas are both dear to Lord Krishna. We also want to value, just as we value Brahminical culture, we need to also value the cows, taking care of cows. We need to understand how to properly take care of them. They need proper land. You cannot keep them unless you have sufficient land to let them graze. If you keep them in a confined area, it's not very good. You have to take care, proper care. So when people would give charity, sometimes people will give charity and they want to give a cow in charity. They have to be very careful who they give the cow to. Because when you give the cow in charity, that person must be able to take care of the cow. And he must, that means yeah, you must have land, grass, so that the cow can graze and get proper food. You have to also have water, because cows need to they drink a lot of water every day. And when we don't take care of the cows, then it brings disaster on the planet. War, pestilence, famine, disasters. These things are not by chance. They are the karmic reactions because of our brutality, because of our cruel treatment of mother cow. All of these wars which come on the planet there was that president of America, President Johnston. He was the president in USA. And at that time, when he was a big cattle rancher, he had a big farm with all beef cattle. All of his cows were for slaughter. And he became the president of the USA. And when he was president, that was when America went to war with Vietnam. And when America went to war with Vietnam, that was when many Americans were killed in the war. They were, because every day the president of the country is killing so many cows. So every day his soldiers were being killed in the battlefield in Vietnam. Karmic reaction. An eye for an eye. You don't treat people properly, you get the reaction. We don't treat the cows properly, we get the reaction. So we do care. We, we, nowadays people, people they only care about dogs. <laughs> they care about dogs. Everything is dog culture. Take care of your dog, you know. And they have dog parlors, you know. Take your dog to get his hair cut and to get his hair permed and oh, manicure the nails of the dog. And oh my, it's unbelievable. And you see people also, they take the dog for a walk. And if the dog passes stool, you know, they carry a spray with them and they have to clean up the stool. They have to clean up where the dog passes. They have a law like that in cities, many cities now. You know, you keep your dog with you, so you take your dog for a walk, and if it passes, you have to clean it up. So people, they carry a spray with them, and they have a bag, and, you know, they clean up the dog's stool as they're walking around. It's unbelievable. Dog culture. People, they say, dog is a man's best friend. What kind of friends you have, we don't, you know. If your dog is your best friend, doesn't say much about your quality of friendship. Mm. <laughs> we have to understand. But this is the conditioning which people are going through. 
Even, I'm seeing even in India now, more and more people keep dogs for pets, you know. They're thinking, nice, fun, you know. <laughs> they don't know the value of the cow. Some people, if you ask people where the milk comes from, they think it comes from a factory like Coca-Cola. They think milk it must be from the milk factory, isn't it? It's from the dairy. They, they don't know it comes from the cows. People live in the cities sometimes have never seen a cow. They don't know what this animal, what's this animal? What milk comes, they're surprised. They don't, people are so ignorant, they don't know these things. And, but they hide it. They go to a thing, they have things like beef burgers, you know, so these different franchise, big franchise, which are come in India also now, and they have beef burgers. They, they make these burgers, a thing, they put it in the bread, on either side is bread, and in the middle they have this burger thing, which is made from beef, which means made from the meat of the cow. But they don't tell you it's come from the cow. They show you pictures, nice pictures of people having nice parties and they're enjoying and b colored balloons and everything. And you go, to the, you go to the restaurant and they have a place for the children to play and everything. But they don't tell you that behind the scenes they are killing hundreds of thousands of animals every day to produce these burgers which people are eating. In the name of their business, they are committing so much violence, killing the innocent animals to satisfy their tongue. So people, they, people don't know what's going on. They hide it all. You take people to a slaughterhouse, take them round the slaughterhouse and let them see how they do it, how barbaric they treat the animals. It's the most horrible, terrifying thing. You take people around the slaughterhouse and then afterwards you say, okay, you want to come and have a burger now? You know? And they're just like, they're about ready to vomit, you know. It's so terrifying and horrible how they do it. I was distributing books over in Europe one time, and I met a young man. I asked him, what, what's your job? He said, oh, I'm working in a slaughterhouse. I said, oh my God. I said, that's horrible. He said, well, anyway, I eat meat. I said, I eat meat, so, you know, I feel I might as well kill them also. You know, he said, I'm eating it every day, so why shouldn't I, you know, my job is killing the animals. <sighs> this was his thinking, you know. He, he didn't have, in Christianity, they even say, the soul, well, if there's a soul in animals, well, some of them say there's only souls in humans. And other people say the soul in the animal is an animal soul. Humans have human souls. Animals have animal souls. They don't admit that you can become an animal. Jiva Goswami tells a, a nice story in one purport. Maybe you've heard it before. Anyway, I'll tell you again. the nice story quoted by Jiva Goswami. The astrologer came to the town. And different people came to meet the astrologer. They wanted to know about the future of their children. So the king sent his son, the prince. The prince came and the astrologer said, uh, Rajaputra Charanjiva. Hmm? King's son, don't die. Charanjiva. And then the, the rishi came. One rishi had been living in the forest with his son. And the astrologer said, Majiva Rishi Putraka. The rishi's son, don't live. May your death come soon. Then the hunter or the butcher came. 
with his son. Vyadi Majiva Mamara. The butcher's son or the hunter don't live and don't die. And Sadhu, Sadhu Jivava Marava Sadhu doesn't matter if you live or if you die. So the people, they were, they were going, what? <laughs> what is all this about? You have to explain. So the astrologer said, Rajaputra, Charanjiva, the king's son, better you live forever. Why? Because he's doing everything, nonsense. Whatever he wants he can do, nobody can control him, nobody can stop him. And he's enjoying all the wealth of his father, and when he dies, he will suffer for all of his sinful activities. So the sage blessed him. Don't die. Live forever. And the rishi's son, the rishi's living in the forest with his father. So they live in the forest. They just eat some wild herbs, some, you know, green leaves and some wild potatoes. They don't have any feast or anything. They're living very simply, very austere. They get the water from the river. And they just depend totally on nature. So they're doing a lot of austerity. So the Rishi, the Rishi's son was blessed. May your death come soon. Because when he dies, he'll get a very good birth in his next life. Because he's done so much austerity. So Rajaputra Charanjiva, Majiva Rishiputraka. Jivava Marava Sado, the Sado doesn't matter if he lives or if he dies. The Sado every day is eating prasadam, chanting Hare Krishna, seeing the deities. And when he dies, he'll go to be with, you know, he'll go on, he'll continue his devotional service. He's serving Krishna here, next life he will go on to serve Krishna. But the vyadi, the butcher, or the hunter, don't live and don't die because he's living in hell now. And when he dies, where will he go? He will go to hell. Right. So this is the logic. We should understand the responsibility which every human being has. And it's described here from Manu Samhita that even the person purchasing the meat or cooking the meat and eating the meat, they're all guilty. They're all murderers. I'm, there are many Buddhists in, in Thailand and Burma and Sri Lanka. They're all meat eaters. They're supposed to be Buddhists, but they all eat meat. I, I sometimes, they will talk to me and they'll ask me about Krishna consciousness. And they'll say, are you vegetarian? I say, yes, we're vegetarian. They say, oh, then I could never do that. That's impossible. They're monks, but they cannot give up meat eating. They're so addicted. So... They're thinking that there's no sin in eating. We're only eating. We didn't kill anything. That's their understanding. Yeah, they didn't kill. But if you eat, Manu Samhita said, you're also responsible. You share the reactions. And sometimes we get people, they want to get initiation, but they're cooking meat for people at home. So we tell them, you're cooking meat at home. How can we give you initiation? If you're going to do that at home, you're going to cooking and purchasing meat, buying meat, bringing it home, cooking it and serving it to people. That's also murderer. You're also guilty. We cannot initiate you in that condition. You have to stop that. It makes it it's very difficult, of course, people. 
what to do. We have standards, we cannot compromise. People say, oh, give me initiation, I'm chanting sixteen rounds. Yes, yeah, you're chanting, but you're also cooking meat. How can you think you, you can, you have to understand. Sometimes people have two kitchens in their home. One kitchen's the vegetarian, one kitchen's the non vegetarian Kali Yuga, what to say? Prabhupada was in London. One man came to him. He said, Swamiji, please come to my home. I want to invite you to my home. Prabhupada looked, him, looked at him. He said, do you eat meat in your home? Do you cook meat there? The man said, yes. Prabhupada said, then I will not come. Then I won't come. It was very powerful. After that, the man stopped eating meat made the home vegetarian. That's the power of the sadhu, could cut the attachment, bring them to their senses. Prabhupada would do like that sometimes. Okay, any questions? Yes, Prabhu? What what did you say? Yeah. Some sometimes you get cows which will give milk without calves. Yes. You do. It's not very common, but there are some cows like that. They will give the milk, it's 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 seen. Yes, Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj, his question is, how, what is the solution of the cows getting slaughtered? What we can do? Well, what we can do is preach more. Preach Krishna consciousness. We have to teach people. And we have to show people also the example. And we have to educate people about the, the karma they're getting by killing cows. And we have to give them also something to replace that. We have to show them how to cook nice vegetarian food. At least, you know, sometimes I will tell people, at least don't eat the cow, because when you kill the cow, you will take birth for every hair on the body of that cow. You will have to take birth and be killed. So I was explaining that to one young boy. I was doing a program one time and uh, I was explaining about the importance of not killing the cow and then one lady told me, she said, my son only eats cow meat. He won't eat any other meat. He only eats cow meat. Well, I said, well, you're his mother. You know, why did you bring him up like that? You know, she was the mother, she was cooking. She said, well, when he was very young, he was very sick. So I wanted to give him the best meat. So I bought cow's meat for him and he got to like it. And now he won't eat any other meat. So I said, you're the one responsible. You're the mother. You raised him. I said, that was your ignorance. She had become a devotee later on, but she didn't know about the importance of uh, killing animals and not killing animals, and especially the cow. It was only after coming to Krishna consciousness that she heard about this. So I said, bring your son. So the next night, the son came. <laughs> and so I talked to the son and I told him, I said, you, your mother told me you only eat cow meat. He said, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, so I said, do you know you're going to have to take birth and be killed for every hair on the body of the cows, for the cows you kill. You're going to have to take unlimited births and be killed unlimited times for all of your sin. And you know, and he was listening and 
and he was affected. He said, okay, okay, I'll, I'll just eat other meat. I'll eat some other. <laughs> I'll eat pig or I'll eat goat or something. And so, uh, you know, that was one thing, one way, trying to reach people, trying to educate people about these things. It's very important that we cook very nicely. The prasadam has to be very nourishing. Sometimes people think if, I go, if it, they don't get any meat, there's no taste. You know, they feel, oh, food has no taste. Sometimes they think, oh, it's, you just eat rice and green leaves. What do you eat? You know, they don't know what to eat without meat, without fish. Bengali people, it's all fish. Everybody eats fish. There was even, there was one so-called saint of Bengal. He said that fish is the fruit of the sea. So everybody thought, oh, very good, very nice. <laughs> so they're all eating fish, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so this is a non, this, this is a problem. People, what, you want to eat fish? Eat erdal. You cook erdal, it has like a, almost like a fishy taste. And you can see also, if you want to eat meat, you can take jackfruit. You know jackfruit, right? So it, there are even some people, some, I know some, some people, they won't eat jackfruit because it's so close to meat. It's, it looks like meat and eating it, something like eating meat. So some people won't eat jackfruit for that reason. But that's a substitute like that. In some countries, like in uh, some Buddhist countries, they have thing called vegetarian chicken and vegetarian fish. They make it from soya. And they have, they have the preparation. They, and they, they make it in such a way it actually tastes like chicken or fish, you know. Because people were Buddhists, they are they become Buddhists and they're trying to become vegetarian. And they're so attached to eating things like chicken and fish. So they make the veg mock, they call it mock chicken or mock fish. It's not the real, but it's made from soya, but it tastes just like that. Something like us, you know, we on the Kadasi. We're not supposed to eat puri, but we have ikadasi puri, right? <laughs> so they have their mock, their the mock, mock chicken, mock fish. It's a substitute. You know, personally, of course, we we can't. Eat these. We wouldn't eat these things. You know, soya, first of all, it's horrible. Soya. Soya is so common somewhere. People, but it's it's very much rajasic. It's not really for devotees. We eat. We have a very nice diet. Everything is there in the Krishna conscious kitchen. We have very so many nice nourishing things. People say, where do you get the protein? We get the protein. There's so many ways to get protein without eating meat. You take beans, dal. Everyone takes dal. We need to take dal. That's where you get protein, a valuable source of protein. Often people don't know that. They, they, don't, they forget that beans are very nutritious, and give a lot of protein. There's so many animals are vegetarian. The elephant is so huge. It's vegetarian. We don't need to eat these horrible things which we're doing. We don't need these slaughterhouses. And we suffer. We do get reactions for these things. They do not do any good for the planet. So we're we do care about the, the environment, the ecology. We're trying to improve the state of the planet. And by preaching, by book distribution, then people can be educated. 
That's why we give so much importance to distributing books. We want to educate people about these things. If people read the Bhagavad Gita, then they can understand. If people will read the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's very clearly mentioned here. Who are the murderers? Everyone is involved in conspiracy, in killing the animals, and they're all going to be punished for, these, in, for their involvement in this activity. All right, any other question? Yes, Prabhu? Difficult to get milk from such places. Sorry? Devotees living in the cities, like. Yes, Bhaktivedanta Manor. In London, yeah, they get the milk from the cows there. They get the ahimsa milk, yes. The devotees get that. The deities get it also. All the milk sweets for the deities are made from the ahimsa milk. Mm. Yes, definitely. We want to encourage more people to do that, to have the ahimsa milk. Make the be be friendly to the cows. Don't treat them like some machine. But when you care, just like even growing food, even you want to grow plants and vegetables, you want to grow tulsi, and so it all depends on our devotion. They're living entities and they're sensitive to our mood. When we worship tulsi, the proper mood will be there. Prabhupada told uh, George Harrison's wife that she had devotion because she, she grew tosi in her home. Prabhupada congratulated her, said, that means you're a devotee because tosi is growing. When we grow vegetables and flowers and so on, there has to be genuine feeling of care. And then the, the, the plants and the flowers, they all grow much better when they're proper, given the proper care and proper respect which they deserve. And more so with the animal like the cow, how the cows are very sensitive when they're properly looked after and cared for, then they provide abundance of milk. Yes? Maharaj, those who take meat according to Vedic scriptures, so he, the person himself has to be killed by the, the, the animal which he eat in the future. Is it right? Yes. Yes. Or, any, doing, or, or, huh? or, or any concession for him, her or him. Or any concession for her or him who sacrifice animal according to Vedic scriptures. Yes, they're sacrificing the animal. It's a karma kandi yagya. Karma kandi yagya, they're desiring to eat the meat. So they eat the meat, but they also suffer. They get the reactions for it. The animal will come back and kill them. So you want to, the people who do this sacrifice? They're, they're, even today, we, there's one temple in Malaysia. In Malaysia, I have a lot of Tamil people there. And there's this one South Indian temple there. On the dark moon night every month, they do the yagya, they do the killing of the goat. And people in large numbers, they all go there. They all want to go there and see the, the, the killing of the goat. And they get the blood of the goat and like that. Yeah. It's just, this is Vedic, but it's, it's in the modes of nature. It's not pure goodness. That's why Krishna said, Trigunya Vishaya Veda. Nice Trigunya Bhavarjuna. The Vedas deal with the subject matter of the three modes of material nature. Rise above the modes. You see, there are injunctions in the scriptures which are for people in the mode of ignorance. So people in the mode of ignorance, tamagun, they want to eat meat. So you do it. You do it in that way. 
But you'll stay in the mode of ignorance. You're not going to be enlightened. Hare Krishna Maharaj. So nowadays we are seeing like uh, wherever we go, every street have their own slaughterhouses. Before like uh, some Muslim people, they have the slaughterhouses, they got the goats and kitchen, chickens, whatever that. But nowadays Hindus also, they are keeping the slaughterhouses each street. Like uh, every day they cutting the goats, chickens and goat, like uh, cows also. So for the business, for earning money. So actually what is the solution for this stopping? What is the solution for the problem? People killing so many goats. Well, the solution is we distribute these Srimad Bhagavatams. We distribute these books and educate people. Let them hear the Vedic knowledge. Let them hear what is actually the reactions for what they're doing. They're supposed, some people say this is our religion. According to our religion we do. The religion said they should eat halal meat, means no blood. Can you get meat without blood? Very difficult get meat without blood. No, they, they, so they, th they think that they just eat any meat. They don't care. And the Chankasi, when he spoke with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there was discussion about meat eating. Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said about the killing of the animals which they do. And the Chankasi admitted that there were many changes made in the scriptures. That they're not, the people don't follow strictly the principles as described in Quran. That they made many changes and deviations. So the Chankazi admitted that to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes, Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaji. I have one question this. Uh, in Gurasa Ashram, if uh, Husband is a meat eater and her wife is a devotee. So, what's in this case? Uh, a wife, if uh, she is there, she is a wife's dharma to cook for husband or meat. So, like. well, what I suggest is that the wife has to learn to cook in such a manner that her cooking is so attractive and so tasty and so aromatic that the husband will want to eat it. No, Prabhupada went to America. People were not vegetarian. But people started to eat the prasadam. They loved it. So if you cook very nicely, very tasty and nourishing food, then people won't mind to be vegetarian. The problem is a lot of people don't cook. They don't know how to cook. They're lazy. You have everything, fast food. They want every fast food, you know. Eat some noodles, eat some french fries, you know, go to Kentucky, go to this uh, McDonald's, then eat their fast food there. People become lazy. They don't they don't even cook. They told me nowadays in, some, in, in, in places like America, when they build houses, they won't build a kitchen. Nobody cooks anymore. Everybody goes out. They go out at night to eat. They go to Singapore on a weekend, 98% of the people in Singapore are out eating. They go out to eat. They don't cook. And the result is, they eat all these kind of things. The, the, there are so many restaurants, everything, even if it's vegetarian, it's with onion and garlic. Everything. Practically, you won't find any restaurant without onion and garlic, even if it's vegetarian. So there, it's really important to train people how to cook nicely. The woman wants her husband to be a vegetarian. She has to make a meal which will satisfy the husband. 
it's a woman's fault that she can't cook properly. So the husband starts eating meat. So we do have cooking classes. Cooking classes are something very important, you know, to train people how to cook, how to use spices and, and how to cook in a healthy manner, which is nutritious and satisfying. Shouldn't just be all oil and fire, you know? Heavy oil and a lot of chilies. That's not good. That will make people ill. You get gastric problems. You get so many stomach problems. So people do, it's very important to educate, train people how to cook, make nice preparation. Prabhupada would always taste the prasadam. Every temple he came to, bring me the prasadam. I want to see what you're offering to the deities. And Prabhupada would, and sometimes Prabhupada would say, this is terrible. And Prabhupada would have to go to the kitchen and show them how to cook. So it's very important to know how to cook in a healthy manner. It should be nice, tasty, it should be delicious. You want people to be vegetarian, you have to attract them. Everybody, we're all servants of the tongue, right? The tongue. <laughs> and if, if you get nice prasadam, you never leave Krishna consciousness. So, cooking, you want people to be happy at home, to get them to eat at home, they have to cook nicely at home. Okay, any other question? Okay, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. <laughs>